Hi, this is 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. My name is Jackie Wright, and we're getting ready to start live on Facebook, and it looks like we might have achieved that goal. There goes this signature that says, hey, we are live on Facebook, and uh, we are recording on Zoom. This is 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. And today we are going to be talking about goodness and mercy and wise sayings. And we are going to be taking that uh, from um, Psalm 23 and also Proverbs uh, 23. And we are doing so uh, because today is the 23rd. And so it just would be a great day to go over those scriptures utilizing the day as a point of reference for our uh, time with uh, reviewing what God is, has to say to us. And as I've said to you uh, many times, uh, this is basically uh, not a Bible study or major deep dive or anything like that, because I'm not a biblical scholar, but uh, I am a person that enjoys uh, the word of God, and I just love sharing uh, some of the insights uh, that God has given me from time to time. And so I share that with you. Now, for those of you who are looking um, via Facebook, you can look at the description box. And in that description box, you will have the scriptures uh, that I've provided. And as far as um, the Zoom audience, I am going to take a second here. Hopefully it's just a second. And I am going to bring up the uh, scriptures that we're going to be going over today because I am able to manage that with this particular uh, program. Can't do that for whatever reason with Facebook. And it might be user error, but I haven't figured out how to how to do that. And if anybody's got that information, you know, help sister out. Just let me know. Uh, just uh, you don't have to even uh, DM me. You can just put it on my uh, my page, and uh, I would love to get that information. And so today is Tuesday, April twenty third, twenty twenty four. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And today, uh, from Psalm twenty three, we get the theme of goodness and mercy uh, follow goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And then in um, Proverbs 23, we have some great um, sayings that we can go over. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of those sayings that I think Proverbs and Psalms, they're, they're kind of like vitamins, you know, they just give you that extra boost uh, and encapsulizing uh, all that, the nutrient that uh, of God's word and just little uh, segments and everything. So uh, consider that. Take your vitamins every day. Uh, read a, a psalm or a proverb. And our key scripture for today, coming from Psalm 23 and 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Proverbs 23 and 17, it says, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. And we're going to discuss those uh, key scriptures a little bit later on in our dis uh, d discussion. But I just like the fact that I'm just going to put out here right now in 23 and 6, Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalms, as um, you know, it is often referred to. It is um, that portion of it that says, surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And for me, you know, we have those affirmations that we um, say daily or should say daily. And that's one of the ones that I think would be a great affirmation. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. To say that to you, um, no matter what the circumstances, what's going on, goodness and mercy, they follow you. Why? Because the word of God says so. When you are in covenant with him, when you are a child of the king, when you are part of the kingdom uh, of God, you can 
rely on those those words and, and they're inspirational for those outside of the of kingdom of God too. just absolutely powerful. And but we want you to come on and be a part of the kingdom. So uh, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever because we are forever beings and we have a choice. Uh, God didn't make robots. So we have a choice of whether we want to be a part of the kingdom of God or not. And I tell you what, uh, looking at Revelation, looking at so many uh, descriptions of what it's going to be like, you want to be a part of the kingdom of God. The bonus scripture that I uh, share every week is um, <clears throat> 22, 24. Excuse me. Uh, for he has not despised nor poured the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. I love that scripture because it just lets you know, no matter what circumstances, whatever we may be going through, that we can depend on God. We can cry out to him and know um, that he's going to hear us. And, you know, and when somebody, when you're looking at these various um, uh, posts that are on the internet and everything, and it's like, these people uh, sound like they've got it all together and everything. And it's like, you feel like, oh, oh what use is it? Well, it is a use to just cry out to God and not even compare yourself to other people or what may be going on. Know that God has an ear for you and that um, even if your uh, family forsakes you, your friends forsake you, you can cry out to God and that he's not going to leave you. And I love that particular uh, scripture because of the fact that it is uh, a messianic scripture that describes what Jesus experienced on the cross. Take a look at that. And it also made me uh, realize, you know, just that that verse as I was thinking about the cross. And, you know, uh, it's interesting that we have this picture of Jesus on the cross and he has um, two <clears throat> criminals that are on either side of him. And the one criminal basically uh, says, uh, well, if you're all that, you know, get us up out of, off this cross. And then the other one's like, hey, shut up, man. You know, we deserve to be here. He doesn't. And then the other, he, that uh, humble soul basically says, hey, when you get in your kingdom, uh, include me. He cried out to the Lord. Uh, as Jesus was on the cross and, and Jesus said to him, this day you shall be uh, in paradise with me. So, I mean, it's just awesome. Can you imagine, you know, he cried out to the, uh, to the Lord right there on the cross. So um, that's another example to us. You know, it's never too late. You can be on the cross uh, uh, going through uh, what, what the, uh, the crucible of your uh, just angst of, things going wrong and you can cry out to God and he will answer you. So just want to encourage you with that. You know, God is here for you. He created you. He wants good things for you. Speaking of he created you, one of our PowerPoints is Jesus is the creator. And that is John 1, 3, Colossians 1, 16, Hebrews 1, 2, and uh, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 24 through 28 basically uh, talks about um, the plan of how Jesus, who created all things, is going to put everything under control of God, uh, the Father, as it is described in um, Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. And the other PowerPoints from uh, that I hope that you get today from uh, our description is the fact that God is faithful and the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So those are two points that I hope you get out of that. And then one of the things like, you know, that I always say that I'm not a, a biblical scholar or anything like that, but, you know, we need to study um, the, what does the word of God say? And I feel so <laughs> inadequate when I, as I'm thinking of this study to show yourself approve a workman that needeth not to be of shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. So for you, <clears throat> I have some resources 
for people who are from people who are scholars that you can take a look at and um, be encouraged and um, to be um, pushed a little bit <clears throat> to get into that study uh, for yourself. Okay, let's get right <clears throat> into this. And um, basically, <clears throat> we're starting with uh, the Lord's, uh, the 23rd uh, Psalm, which is uh, the Lord, the shepherd of his people. Oh my goodness. These are very, I mean, there's only six verses to um, the 23rd Psalms and it's just powerful. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. Very powerful. Just six verses. Uh, I would like for you to, um, you know, the, the ones that are looking uh on Facebook, just go down there in the description box and look at this explosive, powerful piece of scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's a version that uh, says that describes that. It's like, the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me. I lack nothing. When you we have God, we lack nothing. We have all that we need. He he makes us lie down in green pastures. Sometimes, you know, um, we're just go, go, go 24-7. Uh, and that's absolutely um, diabolical to, for something to be going 24-7, you know, um, because God in the um, scheme of things provided us with rest, Sabbath, and we need to uh, practice that in everything. And sometimes we can just uh, grab a Sabbath moment uh, in our work day and everything and just uh, pull back a little bit and um, reflect. Uh, I um, remember, you know, being in the corporate world and everything and running across an individual uh, who actually, I think he was from um, El Salvador. His family was from El Salvador. And one of the things that um, he practiced was that when he sat down for lunch, um, there was no other thing that he was distracted by. It was just time for lunch, uh, no uh, working at the desk or anything like that. And all the meal times were um, dedicated to just that, you know, and um Frankly, uh, meal time is kind of a, it's a sacred time. You know, it used to be the times when families gathered together and they would uh, be able to debrief uh, about the day and that sort of thing. So that, that idea of the Sabbath, of God restoring our souls that we see in, uh, in this particular uh, passage is just powerful because, you know, when God restores your soul, and um, he leads you in the paths of righteousness. He's directing you. <clears throat> then when you, <clears throat> excuse me, when you do uh, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as it says in verse four, you don't fear evil because you have had time uh, to have that Sabbath, that moment with God to let him restore your soul and then while he's speaking to you, realize all these things that you're so fearful of and this and that, you know, that you really don't have any reason to fear. And because he's he's your protector, as in the rod and his staff, you know, comforting you. And, and what a powerful verse five. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. 
and my cup runs over. Look at that. The fact that even in the midst of your enemies, uh, the Lord prepares a table for you. I, I think about Daniel in the lion's den, you know, where the uh, the lions were supposedly were going to have Daniel for uh, dinner, but Daniel just rested and uh, woke up uh, and was there before the king, you know, uh, and uh, it was his Daniel's enemies that wound up being eaten by the um, the lions, you know, that that whole old uh, scripture that talks about when you dig a ditch for somebody, you fall into it yourself. God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. So we don't even have to worry about it, that we can just enjoy um, a wonderful meal in the presence of our enemies because God is with us, you know, and especially, you know, as we walk in, in accordance um, to his word, as we're walking into the paths of righteousness. And what's so beautiful is that surely, no matter what, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. You got that here on earth and you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that awesome? We get to experience forever in the presence of God because of accepting um, the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So that is um, Psalm 23. And as I think of Psalm 23, it makes me also think of Isaiah 40. I didn't put that in the description box or anything. I haven't written that here, but take a look at Isaiah 40 and it's um, verse 11 that talks about the fact that he gathers the lambs uh, in his hands and that he holds them close to his heart and that he gently leads those with young. So that's a description of the shepherd taking up the lambs, holding them close to his bosom. And um, also the ones that have young, that he gently leads those. And I love that scripture. Um, and it was one of the ones, you know, it's like one of the most powerful things you can do is in your prayer to include the word of God, uh, to speak that glorious word back to the creator of that word. And as a young mother, uh, many years ago, I, you know, just single mom, you know, after, you know, divorced after <clears throat> my marriage only lasted about six years. And it's really interesting. All of my siblings, they all have marriages that are, that were like over three <clears throat> decades and everything. So I praise God for that, that I was able to see that. And then I praise God um, for the fact that even my daughter uh, has been married over two decades. And so it's like, wow, you know, just to see uh, the Lord working in the marriages. But for me, single life is um, is the way for me. And I'm not complaining about it. As a matter of fact, I'm enjoying it very much and everything. But uh, in that, the just just the fact that, uh, you know, he would gently lead those with young. And so when I, as a single mom, um, tough times um, happening and everything, uh, you know, where am I going to get the lunch money? Uh, just various things happening, enough gas for my car. And I would pray. I said, Lord, you know, your word says that you will gently lead those with young. And I'll never forget one day I just, I had no money for lunch and my daughter was about to get on the bus. And for whatever reason, um, you know, it's put on my heart, go out there to the front yard. And it was like before dark and everything. And so I go out there and what do I see but a dollar bill uh, <laughs> on the lawn. And so I was able to get that dollar bill and give to my daughter who had no idea that her mother had absolutely no money. Uh, and she was able to have lunch uh, that day until I was able to get more money. So I was just like, wow, you know, praying that prayer. You said you would gently uh, lead those with young. 
And, uh, you know, just so many uh, occasions like that where the Lord just came through, you know, um, as a single mom, uh, uh, di divorced mom, um, you know, just trying to make it through through life and everything. But, you know, what is that? There's a verse in Isaiah that says the Lord thy God will be your husband. And uh, that goes for men too. you know, a husband, men as in caretaker and all that sort of stuff. And I just. Uh, give God the glory for uh, just everyday care, gently leading this particular woman uh, with young and able to just make it through. And so here we are now. That's pretty much it for Psalm um, 23, the 23rd Psalm. I love it. Um, basically, my cup runs over <laughs> because it is so powerful. I can almost, you know, going to tears, you know, just reading that. And in Proverbs 23, let's look at that as uh, the sayings, you know, like there are various sayings, you know, that, um, you know, just world, worldly sayings sometimes too, that, you know, just those Proverbs, you know, that just, uh, just pop for you that just get right to the point. So let's get in, into this uh, Proverbs 23 and, uh, Let's go with verse one. When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Do not crave the, his delicacies for that food is deceptive. Oh my goodness. Um, and what I see there immediately is like, you know, there's a protocol uh, to whatever you're doing and and you're invited into someone's home and everything you just don't go running wild it reminds me of uh, my mother would always say don't go acting like you've never seen anything like you've never been anywhere you know and so the you know pay attention to what's going on around you and uh, it goes back not to have that the lust of the, your eyes you know and everything and 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 to be balanced with those around you uh, saying, hey, let's go on. Uh, do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. So what? It just shows you know, your dependence is not on things because things deteriorate. They run away. They uh, they get promised, but you never receive. All kinds of things happen, you know. And so that's why uh, it's important that our trust is in the Lord. You know, um, the beginning, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, and to have that reverence for God makes all the difference in the world. Let's just just go through these. Uh, do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and you will have wasted your comp compliments. So yes, we're going to uh, go to the entire um, entire scripture here. I only had um, a few of the verses that that were that were up and everything, and so it's just really um, you know just powerful what what the um, the scriptures actually actually say and everything. So let's just go ahead and bring this on up, and here we are, and we're gonna share what we have found with the um the zoom audience okay here we go and there we are bringing it on up proverbs 23 that says beginning at saying number 10 do not speak to fools for they will scorn your proud words saying 11 do not move an ancient boundary stone or encroach on the fields of the fatherless for the defender is strong. He will take up their cause against you. 
like I said, powerful little vitamins. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to the words of knowledge. Very potent. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with a rod, they will not die. Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Now, that is something that's very controversial um, during these times where, you know, people do not spank and uh, they give time out and, and everything. Um, but I tell you, there's truth to that word. And there's a difference between uh, spanking a child and um, beating a child. And, you know, um, some of the horrific things that we uh, we hear about, of you know, extension cords and you know, all getting anything you hand the, to uh, beat a child, that is not appropriate. And that's not what is being spoken of here. And then one of the things is that, you know, when you just tap that little hand um, when they're young, you know, under the age of five and everything, it's amazing how they will um, respond. And you don't have to uh, exert any uh, any pressure or anything that on them. So for those of you who are in that situation, we uh, live in a, a litigious time here in the United States of America. So I would say use your wisdom in terms of how you raise your children. But I can tell you myself, um, thank God that my parents burned that flesh of mine a little bit because uh, it was uh, something that helped me be disciplined. And uh, some of the mess I got into would have been a lot worse if there had just been totally no uh, discipline whatsoever. So that was my experience. And write all the letters you want. Uh, that was my experience. And I thank God for my parents that did um, give us spankings in addition to time out and everything. My son, if your heart is wise, then my heart will be glad indeed. My inmost being will rejoice when you speak what is right. And saying number 15, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. And, you know, that's very powerful. I, I, I picked number 17 as one of the scriptures to focus on, one of the um, <clears throat> main ones. And it says, do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. How many times do we get off in life because we're comparing ourselves to somebody? Uh, somebody has this, somebody has that. We don't have it that covetous spirit comes in where, uh, you know, we think we should have had that and not, and not them and all of that stuff. And especially people who are not guided by a uh, God, the things that they're doing, you know, and, and it's just so uh, limited and, you know, they have a lot of stuff and all they focus on are body parts and things like that. Not anything eternal. And we find ourselves, you know, should we be envious of that? Something that is going to have a definite end to it when we will be able to be in the house of the Lord forever. So that's a very wise, potent thing. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. Because the things that they have, it's just for right now. And it's all going to dissipate, disappear. It won't, it won't be there. And then you have eternity with God in his presence just to show you how much he loves you. And um, there was a description of the fact that there are the creatures in heaven that say all the time, they say, holy, 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 uh, describing a God and that they say holy every time because they see an, a new uh, you know, aspect of God that they hadn't seen before. And then they're just in total awe 
of God. And we're going to be in that presence to be in total awe of God. And when you think about things, um, you know, heaven has things. When you think about the foundation of, of the new Jerusalem and all of the great jewels and everything, and you think about the fact that the streets are paved with gold, that's stuff. And I think it's more interesting than the stuff, uh, the asphalt and the things of the earth. So um, our focus so much is like in this present age, but there's going to be a new age. And in that new age, it's going to be forever. And I'm not talking about um, the new age of the occult and all that sort of stuff. I'm talking about the new age of uh, God's kingdom his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So in that new age, you know, so I just want to encourage you to uh, look at these scriptures and look beyond uh, your account, what you got, what you don't have and, and comparing yourself um, to things. I think uh, we, we end the saying, um, and I'm, I'm just going to read this, uh, the 19th. We didn't go over everyone, but you can go back over it. Uh, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, they will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When I wake up, when will I wake up so I can find another drink? Wow. That is just powerful in itself. You know, that whole idea of envy and sinners. And sometimes where are we when we are uh, in that, that situation so, uh, in the various clubs, the parties of this and that, and we're drinking and we see what happens, uh, when that occurs. So it's all interesting. It's all intertwined, you know, that whole, the Bible and the word and everything. So Psalm, uh, rather Proverbs 17, uh, 10, uh, 23, 17, kinds of rolls into uh, this last saying, you know, you know, kind of watch yourself to not be caught up in the things of the world and what people are doing, et cetera you know, because it's going to all end at some point in time. And those that have the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they are the ones that are going to have the goodness and mercy following them all the days of their lives. And, and additionally, they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when you look at what Jesus talks about, uh, what's going on with uh, with hell, which he did make a dis, uh, discussion about it, you know, where the worm never dieth is one of the things that he said. So, I mean, there's just going to be uh, eternal uh, degradation, you know, eating away and everything. And so who wants that? Nobody. So let's get before the Lord and everything. Can we do our good works and work our way into heaven. Mm -mm. None righteous. All of our actions are as, as filthy rags, you know? So you don't do it by working. Uh, you do it it's, uh, by a relationship and it boils down to what's that saying? You know, it's all about who, you know? And so uh, in terms of being in the presence of God and having a, uh, you know, goodness and mercy follow you, not only in this life, but eternally. Uh, that is through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of the things that I share with you every week on the agenda is the greatest message of all time, which is John 3, 16. 
for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And that's uh, what we're seeking and we're desiring. desiring. And um, what is it said? It says in the book of Acts that those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, you know, people say saved, saved from what? Saved from the wrath of God that is coming. And as we see uh, systems unraveling in the world, uh, we know we need the Lord. So we're going to end here and let's let's just do so uh, with some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And the most important thing that has been communicated um, is your word, your word and not my opinions. My opinions are neither here nor there. And my opinions may not be the truth, but your word is the truth. So I pray that those that um, come upon this message uh, today, this posting, that they will hear the truth and that they will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I pray that the blessings of Abraham will be upon all who listen to this, that you make them the head and not the tail above and not beneath that you bless them in the city and that you bless them in the country, that you bless their needing trough, that if their enemies come at them in one direction, that they must flee in seven. So Father God, I just thank you for all of the blessings of Abraham that the Lord Jesus Christ provided for us, that your people will walk in that. And those that don't know you will desire to know you and will walk in the power that you've given them. And Father, your word says that we tread over scorpions, serpents, and all of the power of the enemy. We are in a war. It says so in Ephesians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So Father, we just pray that we be equipped with the full armor of God and that we take the territory that you've given us in this earth, take back from the devil, take back from demons, that which has uh, just robbed us, oh God, and has robbed humanity. Father, do a great work above what I could dare think, ask, or imagine. And I'm going to be quiet right now because I just want you to move. And I just want you to do your great work. And Father God, I just thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. We give you the praise, glory, and honor, and now and forevermore. And we thank you that we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. All right, everyone. Thanks for being with me. God bless and God keep and God do great and miraculous things. And God do great things in the mundane moments of absolute boredom. So God be with you and blessing. And, you know, when God is in the plan, in the mix, it's not boring. You're enriched. So God bless and keep you in all that you do. Blessings to you. Thank you so very much for joining me for 30 Minutes to Success Inspirational Tuesday Talk. I'm Jackie Wright.